All right, guys, Anthony with Andreas from Austin Historical Weapons Guild. Today we're talking about Fabris Plate 43. Plate 43, Fabris shows a wound of a third against a fourth. This is a continuation of his hand parry series. And again, because these were less exciting to deal with from the uh, reacting side, the winning side, I'm going to reemphasize what Fabris states that these are fail safe reactions, right? We should not be planning these moves. We must be setting these moves up. These are things that kind of show up if things have gone wrong, if things have kind of failed. So, moving right into things, because there are three options today to talk about. First one, we're starting from the inside, right? We'll start third to the inside. As it starts, really simple play back from the beginning, right? From here, I go into second to control and make my thrust. In reaction, my opponent moves to fourth to control as well. From here, I set aside and drop my point to come through. So again, I'm moving into fourth to control he goes to own fourth to counter, right? Both good actions for both parties. I disengage, setting aside, really twisting across from the chest to make my thrust low from third. Uh, the second option, this one is even more exciting. He, he calls a push. Um, I didn't see any immediate references on what a push is. Push could be. Um, so our best version of a push which makes the most sense. We kind of see these kind of options before, remember, where if someone pushes really hard, right, he has options where he just snaps around and does something and kind of makes this play simple. So again, Fabris already talked about these kind of pressing reactions and what to do against those. And here's another option where if you are pressing and someone reacts the right way, how to kind of set that aside. So starting to the outside, again, both in third, I'm gonna make this kind of press to control and isolate. If he lets me, I can turn this into an easy attack, easy thrust from there. However, as I go to make my press, he turns out into fourth, closing that line, he making his own attack. As he makes this motion, I engage my left hand, really again, stressing out that shoulder, turning out to drive this through so I can make my attack as I press out. So again, starting to the outside, meeting into that push, he reacts. I push against it, disengage, stepping through and driving from there. The third final option Fabris gives us is something we kind of struggled with a little bit. And again, it kind of reemphasizes the idea of timing, the idea of finding the blade, and the, the tempo at which you need to react to that finding. Right? So this play starts off again to the outside, and it goes that my opponent finds the sword. So I bring the sword up. He gets his set connection. And if we're here already, this is already too late, right? Me moving up to fourth to stop from finding, well, he's just going to take this thrust, and it doesn't even matter. I need to make my reaction sooner. As he's coming up, I'm now in fourth. He hasn't found my blade. I haven't found his blade, but I'm longer. He still has the same opening, but now we, I have a tempo of space to work with. So as he makes that same thrust, he lunges in, right? He's just going through fourth making that opening, keeping his arm wide. This is when I can turn out and parry and drop back to third to make that pressure happen. So again, working from that time and making sure we're really reacting as soon as he starts to find the blade, not once he's there. So as he's up, I'm away, inviting that opening, being able to set aside my thrust. So with all of these, there's a lot of, first of all, a lot of pressure to react appropriately on the person performing the technique with that hand parry. Uh, these are definitely reliant on control, on good form, good technique, and really, honestly, some sort of lumbar flexibility, because that stretch is not the easiest thing you can be doing. Um, it's definitely not as bad as some of those low positions we see, but there's definitely a whole lot of pressure to twist to move. Let that motion, let the rotation help drop that arm, getting yourself in position for that technique as you apply it through. The other thing that really matters is your partner needs to make those thrusts count, 
right? I think we talked about some of the earlier plays as well, like with the Jurata. If they, they don't commit to the Jurata, they say like, ah, I could have stabbed you maybe. Like this same thing applies here. If they don't commit to that thrust, that intention of that attack, you're going to wind up catching the sword point in your hand because they're not committing in deep. They're not committing in quickly. And the timings, the reactions really rely on both parties going with, I mean, I won't say full intensity, but at least moderate intensity where those thrusts would land, would hit if you're not setting them aside, if you're not catching them correctly. So with that in mind, don't copy us, right? We're doing this so you can see what's actually happening, so you can play with those distances, put on protection, put on gear. Um, these really start relying on those hand controls, relying on the intensity of the drill to make the techniques actually play out. Like, definitely put something on, keep yourself safe. As always, if there are questions or comments, feel free to reach out below, email us, hit us on Facebook, anything like that. We're happy to discuss these things with us, with you folks. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.